From the heart of the city to the outer edges of the Beltway and beyond, this is the District of Misfits Show. The drinking show with a podcast problem. This is your guide into our unique and beautiful city. The good, the bad, the ugly, as well as the funny and straight up ridiculous. Told by us before someone tells it for us. The opinions expressed on this show are our own. And we make no apologies. Welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to another District of Misfits show. It is the drinking show with a podcast problem. It's the podcast for the rest of us. I'm Marcus Bradley Donovan, and tonight's show, we are filming live from the Suss House in the heart of U Street. Uh, before we begin our show, we just wanted to note that Boo is not with us today due to a personal tragedy, tragedy, tragedy that just occurred. In, um, for him, and we just wanted to let him know that we love him and our thoughts are with you right now. Love you, Bill. Now, you, Bill. on to our show. All right, all right, all right, all right. Call action. My mark is Bradley Dunn and Pasteurized Chef on all social medias. The District of Misfits on Facebook, Instagram, Misfits. On the Twitter and TikTok is Pasteurized Radio. Again, I'm Marcus Bradley Dunn and Pasteurized Chef. Tonight, my host will be. Barry Torres. Hello. Va- yeah. yeah, keep going. Huh? Yeah. Va- my, I am Valerie Michelle Torres on Facebook and on the Twit and Insta. I'm at VMTDC. Next to her is Mad Dog Valerie Graham. <laughs> I don't agree to that nickname. <laughs> um, my uh, Instagram is queen underscore of underscore doing too much. On Facebook, I am Valerie Graham. Um, I don't. I don't tweet. Yeah, I'm old. Yeah. I don't really tweet either, but I still have it. I have some Mad Dog in my bag. You want some? <laughs> I'm good. Thank no, you. I don't. I'm have on any. best behavior tonight. You should be. <laughs> and next to her is Ian Taranji. What's up, Ian Taranji? Just don't bother following me. <laughs> <laughs> He's in a couple bands. He might want to tell you about as well. So uh, maybe you would follow him with that. Yeah, yeah. don't follow him. So this is like a. a Nice little reunion, I feel like. Uh, the four of us have done dozens of shows together, quite a few. I've been on some Ian shows. Uh, Valerie Torres and Graham have been uh, the Valerie Valerie team a couple times. Um, G&T. G&T. <laughs> I feel like you guys, again, I say it every time, I feel like you guys should have a, like, a cop show. Lady cops. When you go around D.C. and just kind of arrest people and beat the shit out of them. Yes. I would tune into that. I would watch that. It would I would be, watch that. It would be an interesting really show. So, I mean, I'm going to have fun tonight because it feels good. It feels, it feels like the DC is fuck show. Like we're, uh, we're back at it. Minus the horrible booze and the, yeah. the, the fucking tequila. <laughs> Those shows, I feel like, punch. were a lot of fun for us. <laughs> for an audience, maybe not so much. There's a few of them I still can't watch. <laughs> I mean, there's a few of them that no one should watch. I mean, there's some that I did that <laughs> were actually... <laughs> I mean, there's a thing to be said where you're in a studio that's graffitied Next to the Howard Theater. Yeah. And you have us hooligans, heathens, fucking. Mm. Pour one out for the old T Street. Thanks. I do. One I know that was a shithole. I loved it. Val, loved you it. never were at the other studio, were you? Studio. You were never at the old studio? No. no. Oh, that was, was a good. probably for the better that I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, oh. that's, I mean, we would go around the corner. That spot was legendary, man. Oh, fuck. Legendary. Sheena was the one who was at the yeah. other. Like, I can't be <laughs> trusted. Nobody could be trusted at that place now. <laughs> No. I mean, my car got stolen from that place from one night when I was oh doing no. the show. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. I didn't have to go to work the next I did day. A, I did a band rehearsal there. Uh, I did some other podcasts over there. Nice. Yeah, it was, a, it was a good time. There were a lot of really good shows. And Nick, Nick's very familiar. Nick is our uh, engineer and producer of the show tonight. What up, Nick? Engineer us back in the T Street. Nick. And see, back in the day, Nick would have a back. microphone in front of him, so I would make him talk. Back in the day. And now that he's running shit, he made sure he does not have a microphone in front of him. <laughs> so I also want to thank uh, the Sud House for letting Becky leave. Um, yes, thank Ms. God. Desperado. That was going to be my safe word. <sighs> oh, safe words. You know, let's just go right into the safe words. Desperado. Why not? Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I think all of us was going to do Desperado tonight. Yeah. Mad Dog? Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> witchy woman? One word, girl. One You've been word. on this show a dozen times. But I, I, no, I uh, one word. Pterodactyl. I don't know. I feel like I've done that one before. I think you actually have really done that one before. You have. I w- I'm not ready. Come back to me. Okay. 
uh, is, Jesus Christ. I had one in my You've head. You've been and on I the show more than anybody else. It just it escapes me. Quesadilla. You have to say it correctly. You can't have. You can't say quesadilla. Quesadilla. Um, go ahead. Um, I'm, well, preposterous. But I, that's a word I actually say all the time, so that might be. Nah, you can't use that. Just mine's going to be. There's going to be a lot of shit that's preposterous tonight. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty fair. Mine's Becky. <laughs> all right. Uh, you sweet Becky during sex? I How about felonious assault, since you were considering that against Becky earlier? Throw punch? Yes. Throw, throw punch. punch. Throw uh, you know, I'll give you the hyphen in that. All right, good, good. <laughs> All right, so some shitty news in the local uh, time frame this week. Uh, D.C. homeless got kicked off the uh, underbridge of the K Street. Uh, a lot of people on social media were putting it out there. There was actually live feeds from there. Uh, it's kind of fucked up in my book if you don't understand or you don't know. There is a huge homeless uh, numbers in the city. And one of the areas they tent, it's like a little tent village, is under the K Street in Noma. Uh, but what they did, they built this, what, million dollar fucking shitty artist, artist lights above it. And then the na- they built up the neighborhoods and gentrification to kick people out of their homes. And the people who just moved in are saying they're not safe. They don't feel safe walking by the homeless people who've been there literally since I've been in D.C. For like three decades, they've been under, under the tent, I mean, under yeah. the bridge. Well, I think it's important to see this issue from the point of view of a rich white guy. Um, I mean, not, not, honestly, not, 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 not you it's, really? It's very important. You won't really want to see that? Yeah, won't someone speak for the rich white guys? I mean, Arr! let's <laughs> consider, <laughs> and that's consider it from their point of view. And it's pretty shit. If you've ever been down there, I mean, I talk to everybody. So anytime I've been down there, I have stopped and talked to people, and I've hung out with homeless people just to... My whole thing is like, don't always walk by somebody. Just sit there and talk to them, just hear their story. Because sometimes it's not their fault why they're there. Right. Yeah. You know? For sure. For sure. It almost always isn't. I mean, when you talk about poverty issues and issues of mental health and something uh, as basic housing? a human necessity as housing, um, it, it's like people get displaced. It, yeah. Through yeah. housing policy. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, I mean, we all know, and you know for sure that, you know, there are, there are many layers to that issue of homelessness. It's not just like someone's like, fuck you, like, I just want right. to live my life and blah, and like, that's I'm a drunk and druggy and, you know, I mean, that's not, that's not the face of the homeless, you know, I mean, like, they, you know, they, for whatever reason, they might have been displaced out of their homes or like you said, there's mental illness or, you know, I mean, or just they, they there's something that happens to their their housing and they just don't have time to look for something or else. Rent like, fucking triples. Yeah, I mean. I mean, in reality, we're all one to two or three like yep. pay cycles. Something away, yep. a tragedy yep. like healthcare, a sickness. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, somebody gets sick in your family, you gotta pay hundreds of thousands of dollars in medical bills. You're fucked. You can't pay rent. Yeah. 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 If you're three, if you're three page, if you're three missed paychecks away from poverty. Like, you're not three double paychecks away from being a millionaire. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, you're definitely closer to one end of that spectrum and, and, than the other. And that's the thing. I, I think it's a very cowardice and, like, heartless shit that no more business did in that whole area. And they should be ashamed of themselves. What the are business, they, what, what the are business, they doing? What is it? The Noma Business Improvement District. And they're improving fucking nothing. What what are they doing with these folks? Where are they displacing them to? They, oh, they displace them again. So they displace them to under the M Street Bridge, and then they kick them all out of there. They too. no shit. Yeah, they did that. I didn't know they kicked them out from M Street. Like, and it's fucking winter time. It's cold as fuck. Where are you putting these people? Marion Bowser will never get my vote after this bullshit. I'm very disappointed in her. Like all the bullshit and all the good things she has done. This is the kind of shit that she's been pulling. And feeding her pockets with a lot so, of money. So I'm not a fan of uh, Muriel Bowser outside of her support of Initiative 77, honestly. Um, but I, I don't think that it's fair to lay all of this at her feet. This has been the consensus of the Washington political leadership for the last, I want to say, really kind of like the last 30 years. Um, and in terms of like mayoral leadership going back to um, Anthony Williams. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, you know, 
the, the, the pieces have been put in place to make Washington, D.C. a playground for the very wealthy and a place that, um, that white people are comfortable raising their kids and in, a, in an environment where you're trying to lure wealthy people to come back to the city and spend outrageous amounts of money um, to, to live in the city. There's no place for the unsightly blemish of people living in the street. Like, yeah. you know, nobody wants to see that. It makes people uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. And so this is not like, like I, I think that like at any point a leader, a real leader could come along and say, we have to do something different. I don't think that Muriel is that leader. She never was. Yeah. And like oh, when people excellent. say, you know, Muriel has like a courageous plan to attack homelessness. Her courageous plan was to build a homeless shelter in every ward. That's like kind of the extent of her vision and her the political will that she's willing to address this I mean, issue. That's not helping the issue. Bye. That's that's just basically it's getting out of the street and hiding it from the rich white yeah. girl. That's yeah. what that's doing. Exactly right. And yeah. I mean, what was that old joke? There's like uh, people in the DC say if it's safe yet to come move back in. You know, mm-hmm. as, a, as a Commonwealther, but born in DC. <laughs> uh, no, um, I think those are all really, really excellent points. Superbly said. Thank you. Um, it is a long time. DC is kind of going the way that San Francisco has already gone, yeah. where you have to be rich to live there. Yeah. And DC is getting to that to that place. Mm-hmm. Look, there's a reason I live in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Not the District of Columbia. Uh, you know, I mean, it just it is what it is. I mean, I literally live right on the border because when my roommate bought a house, the same house across the street was twice the price. Yeah. Right. Literally, we're on Eastern Avenue. We're right on the border of Brooklyn and Mount yeah. Rainier. So yeah. we're right there. Yeah. All right, let's talk about some other fucked up shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's get, let's, let's, let's get to the not depressing stuff. We'll, we'll get to that real. Well, there's right, uh, nothing not depressing that's happening in oh, the world shit. right now. No, no, I got some fun. Why did I agree not? to do this show? <laughs> <laughs> Except for that desperado chick leaving. Oh, oh, that was the best thing of the night. No, there are some funny uh, stories we have coming right. up. But I just want to touch on the National Archives uh, blurring some of the, getting criticized for uh, blurring anything that was insulting to Trump recently. Yeah. Okay. So, no, not, okay, so what they did was they have this new, uh, uh, I think it's new? Is it a new um, like exhibit? A display, yeah. Yeah in the National Archive and they used one of these um, photos from the, um, one of the, the women, well, the first Women's March in 2017. And, and there are a lot of the posters that said that, you know, refer to Trump disparagingly and then also, what? <laughs> and then also have, you know, the, the female organs <laughs> written out like vagina and pussy oh or whatever. Oh my God. So Jezebel's. they have it, they have it uh, like, Blown up and displayed you know, at the front of the of the exhibit. Wait, and did they you say sh- vagina? The J- I did. The JJ. Are we blur. gonna Are yeah. we gonna censor that? Blur that, blur that out. <laughs> are we gonna bleep that out, Nick? <laughs> Fuck no. Um, so they chose to use this image, but they blurred out anything that's disparaging about Trump and anything that refers to the female anatomy. So if um, this if this kind of story happened in North Korea, right. we would totally believe it. Mm-hmm. But we're supposedly not. Yeah, we're not in North Korea. And, and the the archive has here um, we are. Yeah, the archive has like because it's come under public scrutiny. The archive has released a statement where they're like, "Oh, oops, sorry, this wasn't a censorship thing. This was just a mistake. Like a mistake is when you use bad judgment and you get caught, and then you're like, oh, did we do that? It was a mistake. Oh, sorry. Are we drink Mad Dog on, a, on the show? It's, it's <laughs> official. That's a mistake. Ma- it's Mad official. Dog, that was given to me. Mad Dog was literally displayed in the middle of the table you mean the as for- a party favor. The fortified wine. Yes. The Mad Dog. Where you were like, ooh, Mad Dog, I haven't <laughs> had this in like 30 years. <laughs> and then she was like, oh, oh this shit's delicious. That's delightful. <laughs> the rest of you do not get any more. Yeah. That's uh, that's like kind of the end of my, my conscious memory of that day. I don't, it and was then, great. I don't know. Shenanigans, it was great. shenanigans. But funny enough, it's it's forever saved in the internet. I, I, I've never seen it. I don't <laughs> know anything about it. Yet. Fuck your dick. Yeah. Fuck your penis. penis yeah, I that's think. what it was. Uh, Fuck your penis. I don't know anything about that. So I don't know her. We have a I website. Get, we <laughs> that have, was BB. We have a website getting ready to drop, and uh, there's a page for the, the DCS Fuck Show. 
uh, I'll make sure to put Val's uh, main mm. one up mm. there. Mm. All the past shows are on there, but I will highlight this one, a Fuck Your Penis just, Show. Just put it like a little asterisk next to it. I, <laughs> I like you. I don't want you to kill me, so therefore flag. I will not. <laughs> okay, so I'm back to this thing. Though, so so the, the statement that the National Archives said, they said, at, quote, as a nonpartisan, nonpolitical federal agency, we blurred references to the president's name on some posters so as not to engage in current political controversy, unquote. Can I translate that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, please. That's why you're here. As a lawyer, um, translation, it is federal policy that we do not piss off the man baby mm-hmm. or else he says mean things about us on Twitter. Yeah, but <sighs> also, though, you're, you're, you're curating... You're curating this exhibit, yeah, idiots. Right. So if you're curating the exhibit, then perhaps don't include the images that require the blurring. Yeah, no doubt. You know, right? Like, it, just do yeah, something, so do something else. Dumb. Do something else. Uh, like this is yours. <laughs> <laughs> it just speaks about our culture right now, though, because um, you know there are sort of like signposts on the way to authoritarianism Mm -hmm. and like doing stupid shit like this so as not to piss off the head guy I mean one of those signposts you know, yeah. and, and I mean, would yeah. it have done it for just Obama? Every single, when, they, when, they, when, they, when, they, when signposts just keep, we just keep passing yeah. them. Faster and faster. You know, like, you're just like. But then, so the best is that then they've now like rolled it back. Mm-hmm. And now they've said, oops, actually, we're right. going to. Because it's inexcusable. That was a mistake. And now we're going to it's remedy this right. a mistake. Thing. Ridiculous. I, I mean, mean, the archives are supposed to be the repository of our nation's history. Right. And. I mean, this you is know. history. Show that people are fu- fucking. So the way the women's they've march was a little. What was it? The like the, like the largest march since the uh, yeah. uh, uh, since the People's March on Washington in in what was that sixty three? It yeah. was the wow. day after the inauguration. Yeah. yeah. You mean the most historically well attended inauguration yeah. ever in the history ever, ever. of it was huge. human huge. beings? I can't confirm, but that's what I've been told. <laughs> I was. Well, people are saying it. That's what I've heard. A lot of people are saying that, yeah. <laughs> well, here's another great and wonderful story. D.C. named to the top 20 cities in the United States with the highest STD rates. Baltimore named number one. Wasn't me? My hometown. Who are wasn't the other me. ones, though? But, like, who are the other ones? It wasn't me. That's all I got to say. Oh, well, oh, HIV's up. Gonorrhea's up. Chlamydia's no, no, up. No, no, I don't need to know what diseases yeah. we're talking about. I don't want to no, know. I just what to are say. these other cities? Number one. Baltimore, Maryland. Number two, right. Jackson, Mississippi. Number Ooh. three, Philadelphia. Shout out to James. <laughs> <laughs> number four. <laughs> number four, San Francisco. Number five, Montgomery, Alabama. Six, Augusta, Georgia. Augusta. Seven, Getting Milwaukee, in. Wisconsin. Mm. Eight, Killian, Texas. Uh, wow. Shreveport, Louisiana. Number nine. Oh, yeah, I, believe I, believe that. That. I believe that. Indianapolis. <laughs> Indianapolis. Number ten, New York, Bronx. Oh, number specific. 11. Are they All breaking right. it out bur- by borough? Bronx? Yeah, they did that one. Right? Fayetteville, which we call Vietnam, mm-hmm. uh, Fort Bragg. How did the Bronx beat Staten Island? <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm getting closer. Oh. Hold, oh, hold, oh, hold oh, please. Spoiler alert. Hold no, my beer. No, no, no. Number 13, Manhattan. Mm. Uh, 14, Tallahassee. 15, Columbus, Georgia. Columbus. Oh, Georgia. Uh, Blair, <laughs> Illinois, Washington, D.C., Columbia, Columbia, South Carolina, Denver, Colorado, number 19, Birmingham, Alabama, number 20. Uh, That's mad. an impressive no. fucking I'm list. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I mean, okay. I mean it makes sense. I, but, like, <laughs> but honestly, honestly, you, I don't believe that, like, Boston is not on that fucking list. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Maybe they, maybe they use a lot of condoms I don't there. believe that they do. <laughs> no, not in Boston. No? They Ew. don't use the f- prophylactic. Ew. No, they don't. I mean, you were in Boston a couple weeks ago. You tell us. <laughs> not that you had sex there. I'm just saying. Rude. I was in Boston. Were you in Boston? Did you go oh. She was in Connecticut. I don't know the difference. Was, oh, a bunch I of white was, people. I was in the south, like on the south shore of, of Massachusetts for all of 20 minutes, and then I turned around and came back. That's fair. You're in Boston. Mm. In my world, you were in Boston. I like Boston. 
<laughs> I hate the. Yeah, I, hate I don't Boston. mind Boston. I don't like their sports teams. Uh, yeah, I'm a Yankees fan. And I like Brady. But. Jacksonville, uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Is that on Jackson, there? Mississippi. No, Jackson, Florida is not. Uh, Tallahassee, Florida. Florida. How is Florida not on any of this? There's only oh, Tallahassee. One, but Tallahassee. Like, yeah. This what? list is defective. No. I don't believe there's like how so many other places. How is only one place in Florida on this list? That's Seriously. what I'm saying. And like, no place in Ohio. No Florida Mi- man has <laughs> no STDs. No Miami. Why is Miami not on here? Fort Lauderdale, Key West. Seriously, yeah, no. no. I don't agree with Denied. this list. Denied. This list is bullshit. Bullshit. Huh. Philly, number three. I do. I do <laughs> like Jam- Jamie Roddick. Number three. Yeah. Now we know. Now we. I mean, know. you're telling me there's not one city in New Jersey that's got more STDs. That's fucking than, a very good point. Uh, than like Peoria, Peoria, Illinois. Peoria. Come Who's on. there in Peoria? Like, please. We know what they're doing. Whoever. This there. list is bullshit. <laughs> I, I call it. challenge on I that. said it. <laughs> Mad Dog calls bullshit. Yeah, I would call bullshit. What else? All right, so. I think the full I need to panel see the, the, of the yeah, district I need of to see the methodology on I this I mean, list. Why, why is New Orleans not on this? Seriously. Right? That's my favorite city in the world. I, 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 it, should yeah. be, it should be on the list. Yeah. I, I, I'm highly surprised. The fact that Shreveport... There's no, like, old. Reno, Nevada, Las it, Vegas. Vegas. Is I mean, they probably use a lot of condoms because there's so much... I mean, uh, the hookers, because it's you legal. have to wear condoms. Yeah. With, yeah. Yeah. See, but they're, still, very, they're very safe. It's regulated. But, out, very safe but there. outside of the sex trade, like, everybody else... Well, yeah, I don't know, maybe. Still, they should be on that Wait, list. Wait, San Francisco is on here, but not L.A.? Yeah. What? Again, challenge. No, I no. challenge. So we're gonna move on to some more depressing shit. Awesome. We'll get there, guys. I swear, we're getting to vibrators and and Pornhub. We're getting there, I promise. (laughs) Just wait, just wait. We're getting there. Um, So there have been, I'm sure everybody knows, there have been a lot of natural natural disasters happening Mm -hmm. in the world. I think the... I think the Earth is telling us something. Get it's very. Out. <laughs> 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 that is fucking awesome. Yeah. Do, do it. Do it again. Do it again. No, do, it. No. do it again. Though. It has to be impromptu. Okay. I'm gonna feel it. I think the Earth is angry. I mean, I've been saying this for many years, but like, I think it's being. It's very evident now that whatever is happening is just not sustainable Can on this planet. Can you blame it? Can you no, blame it? No. no. So there we have the Australia fires, we have the all the multiple earthquakes and aftershocks in, in Puerto Rico and then the volcano erupting in the Philippines and it's all happening concurrently all yeah. around the same time. Which is pretty frightening, you know? I mean I mean Puerto Rico's just got shit on, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and they're and they're so there's a, a, a friend of of mine who's a good friend of the industry. He's um his name is Michael Moore. He it originally was sent down to his. He's a law firm. Uh, he's a lawyer. He works for a firm that um, does um, like insurance for disasters and stuff. Mm-hmm. So he he was being sent down to Puerto Rico a lot. Um, he's now moving down there permanently because there's so much shit that's happening down there. And still, from Maria, they still they can't haven't. Recover. They yeah. haven't recovered, and now they're dealing with. The, the earthquakes and he said that a lot of them feel like they have PTSD like of they're they do. you know they feel like they weren't supported back then like they weren't getting any sort of aid and now they have this other disaster they still haven't recovered from the first one and like they have there's no end in sight for them yeah. I feel like you know and I think it's pretty devastating for the island and there's still really nothing that's been done barely yeah. you know other than Jose Andres's um, what 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 did oh, say? Tourism. Central Kitchen. What yeah. is it? Yeah. Central Kitchen. Like they've been down there, um, cooking for. Immediately they went down right. there and they were cooking food for the people who have nothing. You know. This, it shouldn't matter because every like climate refugee in the world should have, uh, should have resources, should have support, should have like reconstructive and all that stuff, but. Puerto Rico is part of the United States. Not yeah. to say that the United States should be cared for differently, but seeing as how the United States is in a lot of ways the arbiter of who gets help and who doesn't get help, it is appalling that uh, that part of the United States is just allowed 
to, to that, language. I mean, right. It's out of sight, out of mind type thing, yeah. I think. But also, it like, also, I mean, it is part of the United States, so why right. is the United States not helping right, like its not own more white country? Can, can I answer like, that question please. for you? Oh, I yes. got the answer. Yes, please. Uh, it's because they're brown Puerto Ricans. Yes. Yeah. Well, yes, yeah. we know that. Yeah. We know that, but... I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's terrible. I mean... That's basically it. The man baby... Uh, didn't like the way the the mayor of San Juan spoke to him, and yeah. she spoke the fucking truth. And so, you know, yeah, they're behind on yeah. payments. They still haven't given the full measure of recovery after mm-hmm. Maria. Then you do have like actual, you do have problems on the island. Like mm-hmm. just just today, the emergency manager for the island was fired because. They found like a warehouse full of all these supplies that never got delivered during Maria, and it's just like. I mean, who's the blame? That person's the blame for that. I mean, I mean that's I shooting mean, yourself in the foot. It's I mean, a who system. The hell knows, it's not. Man. It's never. It's it, it, to me, it is virtually impossible for one person to to like single-handedly obscure an entire tr- warehouse right, 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 true. filled with supplies. Like there there's supposed to be systems in place, there's supposed to be oversight. So even so maybe this one person had bad judgment or had bad record keeping or maybe there were multiple like who knows, but it, it should have been caught and uh, and like dealt with on so many different levels before you get to this point where, you know, these these people are continue to be traumatized, and there's resources that are just sitting there. I mean, yeah. somebody had to take the fall for it, so that's yeah, why. Exactly. I mean, that's. Uh, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, so, yeah. like, yeah, my my dad's family is Puerto Rican. I'm half Puerto Rican, mm-hmm. and so it's like a an issue that's near and dear to yeah. my heart. The issues in Puerto Rico are way too vast. I yeah. think to discuss in like a five minute segment, and um, the island has been fucked up for a long time. It has very poor infrastructure um, which just becomes so much more visible when a natural disaster hits you know they're in a hurricane zone we're going to see stronger and stronger hurricanes every year as we go through I mean the same problem that hits Puerto Rico could just as easily hit Haiti yes. Dominican Republic yes. you know Bermuda Bahamas Aruba whatever. and does you know. and yeah, it Mexico will. Just, and I mean it, and it will New York yeah. you yeah. know North but Carolina like, it's like Puerto Rico has been hit by so many earthquakes and aftershocks Recently, just since yeah. since December 28th. I mean, it's crazy. It's Trump's fault. It's uh, thanks Obama. <laughs> oh yeah, it's Obama's fault. <laughs> but it's 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 in it's insane that they you know even like the aftershocks are pretty significant. And um, I didn't realize it was on a fault line. Obviously, I don't think it is. Oh, what the fuck? Don't I you have to be on a fault line to get a fucking earthquake? No. no, no, no. No. I don't. I don't think so. Fracking. Ah, uh, that's actually. And and you want more fracking in the United States? You fucked hard. Oh, yeah. That's the word. We're getting the uh, seismic activity in Oklahoma over the last five to ten years from all the fracking off the charts. Not only oh, do you get I the oil into the water stream, yes, you're fucking weakening your ground. Yeah. Weakening Therefore, I like to call that a win-win. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not a win-win. But the good thing is, the good thing is. Those people who profit off mm-hmm. of that, they can come into Noma, mm-hmm. get yeah. a nice yeah. condo, a nice high-rise condo, and they don't have to worry about homeless people yeah. they're not, in their they're neighborhood. They're not moving in there. They're building the fucking things. I have a theory that I'll tell anybody who will listen that uh, a large percentage of all these new luxury condos are just vacant. No, they are. They're absolutely they're Like 80% empty. of them. Nobody lives in them. They're not being built for people to actually live in them. Yeah. They're driving up the cost of housing in this city and there are people who are there is there is a backlog of affordable cheap and like basically public housing but we've got these like and they're continuing to build more yeah. and more and more it's bizarre it's a shell game i probably said this on the last because i like I'll, anytime it comes up i'm like those buildings are vacant nobody lives in them only if we do it's, like, it's like the scene in home alone where he takes the <laughs> he takes the uh the signs and puts them on the train so that like from the outside it looks like there's people inside i don't remember <laughs> oh. that one is that the second one the what? no the, That's first, the first one, one. home alone because he was acting when like he, he had a dinner he, party yeah, scene. he was acting like there was a dinner party so he got like all these little like mannequins and stuff 
and put them on top of the train. And it just and went ran around. The trains. That and then the, the crooks from outside, they're like, oh, okay, there's people here. That movie is actually really dark. That's it is extremely dark. It is extremely dark. It's not a good movie. I watch it. I watch it with my kids. They yeah. saw it for the first time they're at like, Christmas time. They're like, what the fuck, Dad? They're like, <laughs> they're like don't do that, Daddy. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that, Daddy. I mean, these like two crooks are really hell bent on murdering that child. Like, it's just f- fucked. There's a up. YouTube. There's a YouTube Maybe video a- showing like. All the shit that he does to these crooks. Yeah, like how many what, times they should have died? How many times they should have died? Like it's like, like ninety-one the paint, times. The paint can alone would have like <laughs> fractured your entire skull into this like is not, a million pieces. This is not a comedy. This is not a children's movie. You're like, teaching your kids how. Ha- you're teaching your kids it's how. Like a kill. reverse Hansel and Gretel. This is like the <laughs> saw. This is like the saw for children. Like I don't know who the. Um, Please make a saw Home Alone. Please make a Home Alone saw. Yeah. The dark. Saw Home Alone crossover. <laughs> yeah, yes. no, that shit is fucking dark. It's like they came to invade the home, but like they got this little fucking sadist torture <laughs> kid who's like, oh yeah, you coming to my house, motherfucker? Like, guess what the fuck? I'm a, you I'm gonna a, fucking I'm a die you tonight. BB to the <laughs> testicles. <laughs> I mean, and, and even with the, the, how do you lose a kid? First of all, how there do was you a mil- get your There child? was a million fucking kids in that house. I don't First of all, a million what is fucking dad's kids job that, that he can afford to take like that huge ass kids. family <laughs> on like a trip to Paris right. in like 19, like back then, like a, a plane ticket to Paris was like $2,000. Like what the fuck would these guys, like, what were they doing? He does fracking in Oklahoma. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> there's, so nothing, there's nothing benign about any part of this movie. Like what kind of drugs with Kath- Catherine O'Hara? on that she did not realize that Kevin was fucking gone. And do they not have like a neighbor friend that could go over and check on their fucking son in the house? Well, or oh, remember she was in the Paris she was in the Paris uh, airport and they were on pay phones mm. trying to get people like trying to get neighbors and then they ended up getting like the local police department and the guy's like Yes, hello. <laughs> Your kid's home alone. Okay, well, I'll check on him. Also, why did nobody call CPS on this family? Like, listen, we've got a serious <laughs> neglect situation here. Well, the, all right, so that leads me to a point. Like, how many 80s and 90s movies would have been debunked with cell phones? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Like, almost all of them would be, mm-hmm. like... Done. Like the the movie would be over yeah. if there was. It would <laughs> 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 be over with. You fucking left me. Get your ass back. Right. Right. Like right. what the fuck? The fugitive that would attract him on his cell phone. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> That's true. I mean, all the fucking John Hughes movies I think would fucking be like five minutes long. Yeah. I mean, they would just be different. Like, they'd be, all they'd text be messages. sending dick pics. Somebody <laughs> would send, like, Anthony Michael Hall would be sending a dick pic to Molly Ringwald. Snapchat Hilarity would ensue. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, that Major yeah. D would have been like, um, you are not the Sausage <laughs> King of Chicago, <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Google that shit. The parade would have been tweeted already a thousand times. Right. He would have been no, caught. he'd have been caught, <laughs> caught, caught, and caught again. Oh, yeah. fuck. Any well, other, any other movies? Because I, I, I like E.T. I don't know. What? Poltergeist. Sure. Like, look, the clown fucking moved. Look. God damn it. <laughs> that the clown video. still fucking freaks me out. That's the scariest yeah. part of that movie. To that me. movie yeah. really scared me. Like I it watched a lot of scary movies. It fucked me little. up as a child. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. same. I still to this day I still count. Like every time I hear the thunder, <laughs> I yes. still like I see the lightning and then I count one one thousand, two one thousand. And then, it, <laughs> then the I mean, it just tells you white people don't want to leave a house. Yeah, I wasn't allowed <laughs> to watch scary movies. This is a good fucking thing. I, uh, my parents were very bad about letting me watch, like whatever the fuck I. I watched to Hellraiser watch. as a kid. Mm. I watched The Shining at seven mm. years old. Yeah, that's hard. I let my six-year-old watch the scene where the alien bursts out of the dude's wow. chest. Well, I was like, I was like, I pause it. I'm like, Jaime. Oh my God. <laughs> Don't tell your mother. We're going to watch this. You need to show uh, show them uh, spaceballs. Hello, my darling. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Well, you don't we'll like see. space balls? Space balls is bad. Right. I like all Mel Brooks. What, the whole thing out of the stomach? The my brother and my cousin. Six year old. My brother and my cousin. But you're showing a fucking alien. Got in trouble <laughs> for watching the movie um, Private Benjamin. Oh. It was rated, I think it was rated PG. Yeah. I think there were naked boobs. I think Goldie Hawn's naked boobs were shown in that movie. She had nice in private they, I don't think those are hers, though. I think those are body, probably double. A body double. They no, got in no big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> big trouble in like 1978. Like that was a big deal. They were like eight years old. They saw naked boobs and there was trouble. Yeah. Not allowed. You, just can't, you can't just go around looking at no, boobs. You can't look at boobs. Although, again, I watched The Shining. At seven years old, 
with my parents and my aunts yeah. and uncles all in the room, and and they thought it was hilarious. That's and me and my, my cousins all-time favorites. Well, we're scared. We, no, we, that we were like all like oh, when the naked lady came out of the bus, mm-hmm. the the bathtub, mm-hmm. and we were like oh, and they were like ah, it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Just shows a show. You Filipinos are fucked. They're up. crazy. They are crazy. <laughs> that's not. That's not the um, the conclusion that I would that I've drawn from that. Story. Listen, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that. You can't. It is not wrong. You can't wrong. say that, Marcus. I've heard it enough to know that it's true. <laughs> In the world, you can say. I've heard. I've heard Filipinos no, are fucking crazy. No, it's not better. It's not better. People, <laughs> it's people not are better. saying. Yeah. A Filipino once told me. <laughs> Still not good. Philip, it's Philippine X, please. Whatever, fuck off. <laughs> no, the, it in is the not. world of ridiculousness. <laughs> in the world of ridiculousness, guys. I think we're, yes. What do you think about a candle that smells like a vagina? Gwyneth? Only, 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 only if it's Gwyneth Paltrow's <laughs> vagina. <laughs> well, lucky you may have this. Oh my God, really? It's Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina. I have no what, idea what, what is the direct quote. No, they're actually selling it. Well, no, no, I know, but smells like smells like my vagina is in quotes. Did she actually say that? Yes, no, it's, it's on the, the yeah, it's on the candle. It's what the candle is called. It's called, it's called Gwyneth Paltrow's no, no, no. vagina. It's, it smells, smells like, like my, my vagina. vagina. So I thought I saw this on the internet. and I thought it was a joke, so I just strolled past it. Till Val brought it back up, and then we read into it. There's a lot of credible sources to this shit. No, it's not a credible source. It is her website. It, it well, is a product a that is being s- no, yeah, it's goop. goop. And it's Goop. being sold on Goop, and apparently it might be even sold out at the moment. What? It goes for $75 $75. A candle. So are you jerking off smelling a candle? It doesn't really smell like vagina, though. What? what? Why not? I don't Why know. Do apparently it smells, it smells like, like flowers. I wouldn't pay a penny more than 60 for it. <laughs> right? Listen, I thought it would smell like $75. vinegar, but I found out Hell no. people don't use vinegar anymore. You're stupid. That is, that's a true story. Um, I know. It happened yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's move on for vagina smelling candles. Right. Yeah, I don't have anything to say about that. Like, so there is this woman who did not know. I have more than I should have said. <laughs> Texas. She did not know that she was using a vibrator as a rolling pin to make her tortillas. Hmm. And there's the picture of it for you guys. So she gets in an argument with people on online, on the internet, on the interweb. On the interwebs. People are like, that's a v- vibrator. No, they're just like, no, it's, it's a, a vibrating pen. Vibrating rolling pen. She goes, only an old, Peggy is her name. Lovely Peggy, <laughs> bless her heart. She goes, why do you, someone says, why do you have a picture of a dildo then? And she goes, only an uncultured swine would not see that it's a vibrating uncultured roller pin. Swine. <laughs> Oh, Peggy. And someone else is like, um, that's called a dildo. She's, wow. It's called a vibrating rolling pin is Aww, what she called it. Aw, somebody's meemaw. Right? <laughs> all, I know is, all I know is somebody's getting a yeast infection. Well, here's, the, oh, here's the thing. She was, she was selling her. Thank you. Thank you. Good she night. was selling her tortillas online. So she was doing videos to show, look at me making fresh tortillas mm-hmm. that you're buying. Do they smell like Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina? Ooh. They might. That's the question. Yeah, these tortillas smell like. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take three fish tacos for the win. <laughs> and some people apparently are into that. Uh, speaking of porn. Oh my God. <laughs> a deaf man sues Pornhub for not having subtitles. <laughs> yes, that's a yes, real story. Yes, it is true. Huh? Yeah crazy wow. right so he's upset that there are not enough that there weren't any <laughs> videos with subtitles on yeah, Pornhub yeah. Pornhub comes back and says we actually do have a closed <laughs> caption <laughs> section mm-hmm. <laughs> that you can choose I guess if you search in Pornhub you can search yeah, the same closed way that you caption, would any other. and yeah. then there ha- they do have like things you know you could click it I and would love to have that job like writing the dialogue for like the pizza man and then so, like grunting. Except I think I think the loud uh, grunting. So the closed captions, like the, the <laughs> subtitles, aren't actually accurate to what's uh, being said. Ball <laughs> and like in parentheses, ball slapping against the buttocks. <laughs> <laughs> um, splooge. Double fist. Oh my god. So yeah. yeah so if you're interested. 
Red, uh, Red Tube, U Porn, and uh, Brazzers all have uh, closed captions. That's that's. So if you need the closed captions, good. good. I mean, now you know. Yeah. We're I mean, all about inclusion here. Exactly. We're all about inclusion. We are. And yes. the deaf community is welcome they deserve, on Pornhub. Yeah. They I mean, deserve the closed captions. Right. If you've ever had sex with a deaf I can person, tell, I can tell. I can tell the deaf people this though. Uh, they to the, deaf, to the deaf community. We ain't got closed captions. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, stories, we, we the stories are captions. not very believable. Yeah. Unless it's You're going to be left wanting. Oh, ho, ho. I don't right. feel like the character on, development is, is, <laughs> is going to be up to, up to snuff. Find the titles that he was searching. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> so he, there's actually some titles that when he, he, he put in his, uh, yeah. his affidavit, like, I See? searched for this, this, mm. this, this, and this. And it shows you what so kind of... For hot, hot, no, hot step on babysits disobedient nephew. And that did mm. not have closed captions. He was very upset. Oh. You guys missed my joke, though. I did. What Be- did you say? Beethoven's fist. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I'm it works on multiple levels. Penalty yeah. shot. It's one gonna, for... Uh, yeah. One That's what we call is That's a way homer. Yeah. You're going oh. to get that one on the way home. <laughs> uh, no, I already got it. <laughs> oh my god! So then he also he was so disgruntled he thought and he and others I guess maybe they have a some sort of group of of, Facebook of, group. of the hearing impaired who are upset about mm-hmm. not getting subtitles. So they purchased Pornhub's premium subscription, hoping that it would alleviate the issue, which it yeah. did not. Mm, that does not. Yeah. No, it didn't. No. Good old, what's his name? Hold on. His name that is... That just allows them into the dungeon. <laughs> you got kicked out of a place called a dungeon one time. What? Just what I've heard. Yaroslav, Yaroslav Suris? Yes. Where'd you see that? Right there. Yes. That's his name. So, oh, Yaroslav. So, so I'm pretty sure he's a white guy. So <laughs> some of the other titles, Sexy Cop Gets Witness to Talk, mm. Daddy 4K, Allison Comes to Talk About Money to Her Boys, Naughty Father... Yeah, dude's a freak. Mm. Wow. That's a wide range of fucking porn. It's a lot of... I mean, he he has a breadth of uh, interest. Yeah, a breadth of interest, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> that, that's interesting. Yes. So, so on a sad note, uh, HBO is not renewing The Watchmen. Sucks. <gasps> Anybody here seen The Watchmen? Yeah. I have not seen it. Well, you need to watch it's it. Me, like it's, no, no, it's, it's actually outstanding. It. Really, it's okay. I'm a comic, I'm a comic book King. nerd, though. I'm a comic yeah. book nerd. I'm a comic book nerd. So, so. What, did you, what did you think about it? Did you, I liked it. Did you like? I liked it, it just fine. It, they did some interesting things with it. Um, they didn't fuck it up. Let's just put it. It wasn't a Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just want to say about Game of Thrones, I love the fact that those two sh- shitty writers are being blackballed and fucking. All over Hollywood, they're losing jobs left and right. They lost their Star Wars. They lost their—I don't know if they lost their Netflix, but they lost something else. I'm sure, they're they're both crying in a bathtub. They're not full fucking of money crying. Right they're now. not fucking crying at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fucking eight hundred. Wiping their eyes with million dollar bills. <laughs> so, but you you did enjoy the Watchmen? Oh, like yeah, I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. It was it was an interesting <laughs> an interesting take on on like the whole story. Yeah, and I thought I thought they. I actually think they did better than the movie, I should say. Like, telling the real story. Like, you know, until I talked to actually uh, Zach, I thought the way it ended in the movie is how it ended. I didn't realize what it actually fucking was. Which we're not going to tell because you haven't seen it. We're going to make you watch it. I would love to watch it. I did not remember that that movie was three hours and 44 minutes long. (laughs) Because we started watching the first two episodes and then I was like, I don't remember what happened in the Watchmen movie. I was and like, I, got I pissed feel off, like, like we gotta watch. I was like, I feel like we need to watch the movie. And then I was like, all right, great, we turn it on. I was like, four hours later. I was like, wow, this movie <laughs> is still going on. What happened? Like, why? Why is it so great. long? The movie's not great. The comic is better. Well, the comic is better. I'm 41. I'm not reading comics. Why not? I had never read them as a kid. Okay. So, but I. I never read them as a kid, but I do love all the comic movies. Mm-hmm. Like I love all the Avengers. I love all of my life. Yeah. And I just like, because I think it's for me that I always wanted to read the comics, but I never did. So me watching the movie kind of gives me an insight into mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. you know? My brother, my little brother, um, used to steal comics from the local drugstore. And so, I mean, I'm pretty sure the statute of limitations has expired, so I'm outing him. But that was how I got to read all the comics. Mm. I used to read my brother's run for porn, so I understand. 
<laughs> I want to thank the Sud House here in the heart of U Street, 1340 U Street Northwest. Very pleasant. You like how I went very, there? Very, very pleasant. I'm going to the Sud House. Enjoying my time here at Sud House. Uh, <laughs> the website is Sud House DC. Oh, that's our email. Sud House DC at Gmail if you need to talk to them about anything. <laughs> so we're moving on. Uh, like I said, this is a short show just because of the time reframe. We started after Super, uh, after Super Bowl, the football game, which Kansas City and uh, San Francisco are now in the Super Bowl. Uh, Sal does not care. <laughs> it, should, it should make for a inter very interesting Super Bowl. But part of the reason we brought Ian on originally, but now he's been here the whole show. I always love doing a show with you, so I never mind if you're here for five minutes or five always, hours. Always happy to be around with you guys. Obviously, he's a lawyer. He knows a lot about uh, politics. He actually has his own uh, political podcast you want to tell us about? A so bit? it's a Supreme Court podcast called SCOTUS Pod. What? Um, yeah, so... We're gearing our show. It's myself and Sandy Hausler, who's a uh, New York appellate lawyer. And we try to gear the show. There's actually quite a few Supreme Court-themed podcasts out there, and a lot of them are like law professors, yeah. and their audience is like lawyers who are like really, really deep, deep, steeped into this stuff and know all the jargon. And people like me don't fucking understand. I think what we're trying to do is kind of like demystify it a little bit for what I would call a sophisticated lay audience, mm -hmm. professionals, people who are not, you know, obsessives about the court, but the Supreme Court has, uh, can, can have massive influence and impact in our lives. It Im at virtually every case impacts somebody's liberties um, and quite often your liberties. And we're and seeing it now. So, you know, it's really, really important. And this is a blockbuster term for the Supreme Court coming up. I mean, Roe versus Wade <laughs> looks like it's possibly well on the way to being overturned. But what happens if that's overturned? Like, I mean, if that overturns, then basic. If that's overturned, then states can make so it goes whatever back to laws so restricted. Basically, it goes back to state by state. So it's not the whole country it goes to state to state. No. I mean, you know, it'll. It, what it'll do is it'll. It'll. Right now, Roe versus Wade says that there is a constitutional right. To be to able an to abortion, have, yeah. to, to be able to have an abortion, and if that's overturned, then any state, like in the District of Columbia, they're probably not going to, you Alabama. know, outlaw abortion in the District of Columbia. Probably not in New York or California or you know several other states. The educated, but states. there's probably several states that will, and will do it fast. Yep. And and then you're going to have and some gleefully they will do it. And they'll gleefully, have, you'll, and gleefully. You'll have back alley fucking abortions, black market abortions. So I was actually listening to a podcast, and there was, um, uh, and for the, I cannot re recall the organization, but it was like a women's rights organization that's uh, you know de devoted to protecting reproductive health. And she was actually talking about we're seeing a revolution in like over the counter and 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 medical abortion, and so. A lot of the way that these states try to restrict abortion is by restricting the providers. And if you get yourself into a place where you don't need a provider, you can just, a doctor can write a prescription, and you go and fill the prescription, and you can abort the fetus in that way. Um, can you buy from Canada? I mean, that's if you, a, if you mean, can that's, buy that's Viagra an issue. from that's Canada. A, that's an, that, that's an issue that people are advocating. Or Tijuana. They're advocating, they're advocating over-the-counter contraception yeah. um, and and more widespread use of, I guess, we're, are they like abortifacents? I, I fucking I, don't. I've never by, no abortion. I, by no means am I the expert on this, but like I'm a, a constitutional law nerd, so it's like, you know. Uh, that you uh, are. That it's it's devastating to think about how something like that would end up like who who is able then to get the doctor's prescription for the abortifacent who then is able to um however much the market decides that this procedure costs because now because of supply and demand this is something that you know you can price it you know the market forces can price it however they want to so who gets to have who gets to terminate a pregnancy? Guess what? Not poor people. Not people poor who, women about, in the I was about south. To say people who are insured. Right. Right. People and who are insured. People I mean, who that gets have into, doctors. Sorry, that gets into a whole other slew of issues yeah. about what's happening with healthcare yeah. in this I mean, country it's just and what's happening to you know the 
protections and and the the, the access that was granted to so many people that yeah. is now you know in the process of being stripped. Um, so that's one. That's just one case that's going yeah. that's 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 going to happen at the right. Supreme Court this year. There's cases about um, giving public money to religious schools. There's Fuck case, there's a case about. Um, well, the abortion case, actually, let me back up really quickly because what's interesting about the abortion case to me from a constitutional standpoint, so like I think it was about three or four years ago, there was a case where Texas's law that basically said if you're going to provide abortions in the state of Texas, you have to have admitting privileges into a hospital, right. which is very rare for, for abortion providers. And, and it was just sort of like a, a, a backdoor way of trying to just outlaw abortion in the state. The Supreme Court held by a 5-4 majority that, you know, that was too grave of, a, uh, uh, of an imposition on the right to abortion. Um, and that was a 5-4 decision with Justice Anthony Kennedy that in that five. Well, he has since retired, replaced by Brett Kavanaugh. Oh, that guy. So the state of Louisiana, awesome. the state of Louisiana institutes the exact, the exact same law that the state of, that the Supreme Court found just a few years ago was was unconstitutional when the state of Texas had it. Um, so this is just clearly a play by conservatives yeah. to just try to get this case back up now that they think that the makeup of the Supreme Court is more favorable to them. See, and, and so that's going to be an interesting. And that's what a lot of people don't realize: when you vote, you're not voting for a president; you're voting for the courts, you're voting for judges, you're voting for all your local shit, like. Yeah. That's where it's more important. Like the president is a puppet. I will say that. This one's just a fucking mouthpiece. A little insane on the mouthpiece mm-hmm. side. But at the end of the day, it's about Kavanaugh is going to do way do more damage than Trump will ever do. I feel like in the future. Kavanaugh, I mean, could potentially be on the court for thirty years. That's what I'm saying. Yep. So that's yeah. going. That's why. That's Gone. why. That's why you need to fucking vote. Yeah. Not uh-huh. just not just for yeah. your senators and your presidents. For a generation. We've lost the Supreme Court for a generation. Yeah. Yep. And that fucking sucks. Yeah. And I remember on election night, I, I could see things were going bad, and I was like, I do not want to stay up all night only to be, like, <laughs> pissed off. So I went to bed. How? Woke up. Did you sleep that night? Not well. Oh, I was um, I, I woke up I in the morning, confirmed oh, the, the, my worst fears, and the first thing that I said was, well, the Supreme Court is gone Dead. for a generation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Literally for a generation. I did not sleep for, like, Three days out all day. Yeah. It was a horrible thing. I was so acutely depressed yeah, I that I, I took off work for like three days afterwards. I think everybody. Did. And no, I really did. I, I called and I said that I didn't feel well and I needed to. But I, I, I said I had some lady issues and I was like, I'm. Oh, I'm you have did to have some lady <laughs> <laughs> Your reproductive <laughs> rights are fucking yeah. dead. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 I was like, I just lady can't. Issues. Lady issues. I can't, right I, can't I can't work. And I took off the rest of the week. I took yeah. off the entire week. I would say from Wednesday through Friday. I would I say this. I, 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 I would say this. Getting away from from the court tangentially and getting like into politics a little bit. I always feel like the fundamental divide in this country. You have a left wing. You have a right wing. The right wing hates the establishment of the Republican Party. The left wing hates the establishment of the Democratic Party. The difference is, on election day, <laughs> the right wing vote Republican reliably. Right. Yeah. They, they know. Win. That no matter they what issues mind. what issues we have with the establishment of the Republican Party, we sure as shit don't want Democrats. Yeah. We sure as shit don't want people of color. We mm-hmm. sure as shit don't want women telling us how we're doing shit. And the left wing like kind of shits on the Democratic Party. And we've seen there are four Supreme Court justices on the Supreme Court right now who were appointed by presidents who did not win the popular vote. Mm-hmm. More people voted for George W. Bush's opponent, and he put the Chief Justice, John Roberts, um, and Samuel Alito on the court. Now Donald Trump has put Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh on. It's four justices in a five to four conservative majority right now that were put on the court because of presidents who won the Electoral College, lost the popular vote. Like, I see it right now in this Democratic primary, like, Bernie Sanders supporters shitting on Biden and shitting on Warren and Warren people shitting on Bernie. Like, the data is pretty clear. If the left wing doesn't, like, come on board and vote Democrat, regardless who it is, 
Trump. Trump is going to win again. Oh, absolutely. Right. He's, He's going winning. to win again. He is going to win. I, you know, it, it feels that way. I don't know what magic Obama had that sort of, sort of unlocked it, that brought everyone in to the tent. Um, but I'm not sure that I'm seeing think, that guy, I think anyone it, on that stage. I think there's a couple of different things. Like, one is, like, Barack Obama's kind of political, like, he's kind of that once-in-a-lifetime political talent that you political don't see. Political superhero, yeah. yeah. But the other part of it is the, the George W. Bush presidency was so fucking Orwellian and terrible. Yeah. It was so, like, viscerally we needed a break. terrible that voters... And I think I think people who had traditionally vo- or historically voted Republican Went blue. were like, this shit was so bad that I'm willing to vote for this black man who seems competent and intelligent yeah. and seems trustworthy because this situation that we just came out of, it was surreal. And I think... Yeah. Um, but you don't like, think that it's like... I mean, exponentially no. worse no. now? I, I like, do. I do. But it's not enough. I think that a lot of the younger voters who are kind of um, maybe tipping the scales, they don't remember how viscerally terrible. And it was, it was eight years. It was eight years of motherfucking Dick Cheney shot somebody in the face. Like, there were so many things that happened death, war, during that, crash. during that Hurricane Katrina, yeah. things that happened during that administration. And I was like a young mom watching all of this, and I couldn't believe it. And like, before that, like, I kind of believed in America because I'm a dumbass. But like, I believe, and it was like, that shit was so bad and so dark that voters in this fucking country were like, yeah, I'm going to go with the black guy. Like, I don't know about this. This shit was that fucking yep. bad. Yeah. I'm going to take a chance on this competent, brilliant, articulate black man. Part of it was because he is magical in his way, but it was like, it was such a dark, dark, dark time. And I think for those of us who were adults during that administration, being taken back to like a darker period, because we were like, this is never gonna happen again. We as an electorate are never going to let something this toxic and this ugly and this incompetent, I mean, oh my God, the gross incompetent, and the fact that the Bush administration seems competent, yeah, and seems ethical, and seems like appropriate, no. compared to the standard of but what we come to. But that's what I'm saying, to, is yeah. it like, don't you think, I mean, no. <laughs> I, Bush got I, I, under, I understand what you're saying, yeah. but like, but you're, what I'm, what I'm getting at is that it was bad. And it was dark, and it forced the yeah. whoever, like the Re- Republicans who would typically vote for Bush or uh, vote for another Republican, mm-hmm. just be swayed. What is different with this? That like, he, this is, I mean, exponentially. Like I said, it, he. Trump is exponentially worse. That's when it the comes scary to, thing. That's when the it comes to like yeah. what he Just stands for and what norms. he does as far yeah. as um, like what the typically what the Republican Party yeah. would stand for, he mm-hmm. doesn't. He's blown that party to bits. I, I, and what is happening to the to the to the Republican Party, like the people who so, believe in like the the basic, you know, whatever so the by tenets the, of of. of being a Republican. So by the same by the same token, um, the same way that the horribleness of the Bush, the W. Bush administration made it possible for people to consider voting for a black, a competent black man. There's a significant population of this country who was so rabidly traumatized by having to exist under the presidency of a black man that they have become like weaponized as voters like these deplorables yeah became weaponized as Who voters vote because before. as much as and we didn't understand this as much as we were traumatized by the presidency of George W. Bush, and as much as we are traumatized by the presidency of Donald Trump, the, there are a lot of people, well, like white supremacists and like just people who, you know, I guess we call them economically distressed white people in like middle America and the South and whatever, 
um, who are who were traumatized. I don't agree with this, but people were so like we didn't understand how angry these people were to have had a competent, non-corrupt, brilliant, articulate black man lording over them with his degrees and his black wife and those black children so and uppity. the nutritional lunches and they? and her arms and that tan suit and you that know like tan suit gets me more than fucking anything. so many things that's he, the biggest conspiracy he had or scandal uh, he had uh, so like so that's one one is like we didn't we didn't and like these same people who are who are like galvanized by their like, yeah, we are deplorable. Like, yeah, we are racist and homophobe and we hate it and we don't even like Trump. We just like how mad he makes you libtards. You know, like right. that's. And I think that also there are people who, who seem to, seem to like, I mean, I think that he's normalized, like what you were mm -hmm. saying, that mm -hmm. he's normalized this terrible behavior, you know, like, yeah. and like, and people who Shit who that people felt before it, felt like they had to hide that right. shit. They're so like, like, they they felt this way and they want to behave this way within their own circles, but felt that it wasn't, you know, it, it, it wasn't acceptable, yeah. but now, now they're it's acceptable. Richmond. Put that shit on a t-shirt. <laughs> Our president behaves that way. Yeah. All right. Well, let's now let's, he's been impeached. But yeah, also, let's, let's, but also, yeah. I think I'm sorry. I know you're trying to. But I think another thing to like to acknowledge is that t Donald Trump is not particularly an aberration of the Republican Party. Donald yeah. Trump is the kind of symptom, not disease. The symptom yeah. of the like the it's kind of anti-civil, like anti-human, yep. anti everybody that is not a wealthy black a wealthy white man. Like the shit that has been the building blocks of which have been put in place since the presidency of Ronald Reagan and that is why he is there. You know, this this was these were not like good dudes. Yeah. They were putting in place the building blocks of everything that is happening here and Donald Trump is just a festering herpes sore mm -hmm. of like what the Republican Party has been supporting and building for for decades. Generations. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Going back yeah. to Nixon even before yes. even before yes. Reagan. Well, right. let's talk about impeachment. All right. Yeah. So Ian? we yeah, we brought Ian on to enlighten us a little bit more, give us a little more yeah. insight into so this so whole impeachment process. He's what, impeached. What, yes. So, so what does he's that impeached. Does that mean? So, so now we're going into, you said on Tuesday. The Constitution, the, well, the Constitution gives the House the power to impeach the president and also other federal officers, like federal judges, mm -hmm. have been impeached. The vice president could be impeached. Um, un, federal officers, basically, yeah. Uh, he's the third president who's been impeached. He was impeached on two articles of impeachment. The first being uh, 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 like a... Like a Dereliction of duty, abuse of power, abuse of the power of his office. The other was uh, obstruction of Congress. He just his administration has just wholesale declined to participate in the investigation, the investigatory part of uh, of the impeachment proceedings. Um, so, so what is he's been impeached? That you you uh, just a simple majority vote in the House of Representatives uh, is sufficient to impeach. And then you submit the articles of impeachment to the Senate. The Senate tries the case, basically. So they're actually trying the case. So yeah. So the vote is done. The vote is done. Impeached. He is impeached. He's impeached. So now the Senate will hear the trial, uh, and each senator has a vote. Um, now it's a two-thirds majority. It's not a simple majority. It's a two-thirds majority to actually remove him from office. Which won't But happen. if 67, it's unlikely to happen. If 67 senators voted, heard the, all the evidence and voted to remove him from office, he is done. And he has to leave. He has to leave. And then it's, and then it's President Pence. Okay. Which, ooh. Oh, no. Ooh, I would take, but but ooh. I would take it for a year. Take, I would take President Pence right now. Yeah. So. Um, so, so the trial looks like it's going to begin on Tuesday. The big sort of like... Uh, uh, the fault line between Democrats and Republicans is whether there will be additional witnesses and evidence called. You know, as I mentioned, one of the articles is obstruction of Congress. You had just wholesale uh, uh, refusal 
to cooperate with lawful subpoenas. Now, can they do um, this now? If they get subpoenaed in, in the Senate, can they be, like, blocking people from going? So before we get to that question, the Senate has to subpoena witnesses. Okay. Uh, Mitch McConnell has at least indicated he's not, uh, he's, not, he's not really down with having additional evidence. I think Mitch McConnell in his perfect world just wants this to be done, over with, get him acquitted, just get it the fuck over with. Because um, the longer it lingers, the worse it is, because the president is a criminal. You know, and they, they, the Republicans sort of want to conveniently, uh, not a criminal, not a criminal, look over there, look over there. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, I mean, but the, they're saying he's not a criminal, but they're also saying, and even if he is, he's the president and he can do whatever he wants, like, you know, it's like there's yeah. so much double speak that's happening. He didn't do that. There's no way he did that. But I know even for if a he fact did. he didn't do that. Well, okay, so if you're showing me evidence that he did do that, like, what's the big deal? He's the president. And yeah. why, are, why are you guys engaging in this partisan witch hunt? This is what's wrong with you, you know? And it's like, oh, my. It, it, it's, the whole thing is, like, when you're in an abusive relationship, the, the, <laughs> the person in the abusive relationship, they wear you down. They wear you down. They talk you in circles. And like yeah. everybody, every like we're tired, and that's like by design. Yep. All of this, it's it's exhausting, and that's it's exactly right. surreal, and it's so obvious, it's so blatant. No and like, doubt. No oh doubt. My but if you God. talk to somebody who who is a believer in that side, uh. they'll argue all the talking points all right. day, all night, nonstop. I have a friend back home who it feels very familiar. Yeah. <laughs> because there's an entire, I mean, there's a right wing media ecosystem yes. that feeds them, They're not feeds them what in. they want to hear. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, that's, to me, that's a subject for another day. But, yeah. like, the question becomes whether we're going to actually have witnesses show up who either refused to show up in the House or let it be known that they were not going to show up and so the House didn't bother subpoenaing them. Um, Can you recall some of the former or. Or it's already you know, on I record. I suppose they could, but it is like the it's testimonies, already on record. testimonies already on record. Um, in the Clinton impeachment, what they did was they deposed people, so they questioned them, not in, in the Senate chamber live, but they questioned them in a separate, usually like in a law firm conference room or something, and they videotaped it so that they could play portions of the tape, like, you know, and then Witness X said this, and here's the video of, you know, Monica Lewinsky describing this day, and whatever the um, shape of the dress so. and the stain and I fucked his penis this day fuck your penis I take no joy in like <laughs> that whole I mean it's just there's just nothing like I, I can't find like humor in in any of this like it's just thinking thinking about the Clinton He's a criminal. The, yeah, yeah the Clinton impeachment which was like okay like that was fucked up. Like at the time, I was in my early twenties, and I was like, "This is a witch hunt," it and was. it was. It was. It was. It, it was a witch was. hunt. Witch hunt. But Beretta did that shit. Yeah. So it's like, also, if you know that they're that they're coming for you, like, don't engage in your like sex addiction yeah. with an it, intern <laughs> over whom you yeah. have power for in sure. my office. Like, don't do that, guy. For like, sure. Like he did. The, you know, yeah. it was like. I was in law school when that was going on, mm -hmm. so I had you know. Conservative friends, liberal friends, yeah. um, and and the discussion always became. And, and I've actually gone back and looked at, at Gallup polling data from the time as I wrote an article, like months before the whole Ukraine thing, basically saying he should be impeached. Um, and, and and the argument was always, okay, well he he broke the law, he violated the law, and it was like you everybody knew and understood very clearly what Bill Clinton did. Right. They knew it was wrong. They knew that he was not a great guy because of it, but vast majorities of the American public did not believe that it was impeachable. It didn't disqualify him from being right. able to be trusted to, he just like to conduct his and, and to be fair, the duties. economy was going well in the late 90s, early 2000s. It was boom. It was boom time. Everyone was, you know, loving life. And so, you know, Clinton was a very popular president. I mean, when he left office, he was at about a 60% approval rate. 
you know, on on Trump's best day, he's a 46, 47, maybe. What is his highest Maybe 48, rate? probably 48. I think 48. I don't I think, think, highest I don't think he's never ever hits 50. I don't think no, he's, he hasn't. Not in a, not in a reputable, right. i.e. non-Rasmussen non -Fox. poll. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, what we're going to see, I think, starting Tuesday is the House managers who were picked last week will lay out the case you know in a normal trial setting in a normal trial setting for me what I always want to do is tell a story and you use your opening to, to say here's what the evidence is going to show this is that story and we have evidence to back up every single point in the story then you go and you present the evidence or you, you know you obviously have to follow the rules of evidence. And then at the end, you go back and say, okay, remember that story that I told you? You heard this evidence on this point. You heard this evidence on this point. You heard this testimony. You've seen this document. Excuse me. Yeah. And, and in that way, you support the story right. that you have told the court, you've told the jury, you're about to tell. And that's winning trial strategy. You have to tell a compelling story, but it has to be supportable yeah and so I think that's what we're gonna see that's what I hope we see from the house managers is a unified story I mean I, it is what they're what they're I mean I've, I've, I've looked at I've skimmed over the briefs that they've submitted and they are telling a unified story of a president abusing his power for personal gain you know the office of the president is entrusted to him by the people of the United States in order to represent the people of the United States and not being represented. So, I mean, I was going to ask where do we go from here, but, like, if he gets impeached, he gets impeached and he's gone. Well, he's already impeached. Well, he's already if, impeached. They have, so, if they convict him. So this is where he gets convicted. If they convict him by a two-thirds majority, then he's removed from office. Okay. And I think the chances of that are okay. slim. Nil. Slim and none. Now, what are the chances, do you think, I, that they will, that in the Senate, that somehow the Democratic Party will will be able to convince four of those Republicans to agree to have witnesses. To having what, witnesses. what are the chances? I am skeptical of relying on so-called moderate Republicans for anything. So no. I they march in lo they march in lockstep. They believe they it when get I behind see it. their party. They always do. They always do. Jeez, they always Susan do. Susan Collins. Well, they, they they do because it's in their in it's in their electoral interest. Yeah. So, all right, guys, hate to end the shorts. Uh, we're gonna bring you back, uh, especially in the next couple of weeks to talk about this. But the uh, impeachment hearings are going. Not the hearings. What do we call them now? Uh, the trial. The trial. So the trial of the impeachment. The trial of Donald J. Trump. Fuck. Any final quick words? Desperado. <laughs> um, thanks for having me on. I really thanks. enjoyed talking thanks with you guys. Sorry, I'm like, I'm a little uh, Eeyore today, but like the world, this is I a feel fucking, like we these all are, are dark Eeyore times, today. man. Uh, I think it's everybody is Eeyore. I'm, a, I'm an immigration lawyer. Don't tell me about <laughs> dark oh, times. It's, it's always that fun having you on. Yeah. Thanks, Torres. Yes. Any last words? <laughs> um, this is I, I yeah. I mean, I I feel I'm I'm feeling like Val, like a little forlorn, a little Eeyore-ish in general. I hope that there's like a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. We, may, we may have to start going the that's way. That's the train. Of Zach Hoffman. <laughs> Bernie Sanders. Anyway. Call to action. I'm Marcus Bradley Dunn with the Pasteurized Chef on all social medias. The District of Misfits on Facebook, Instagram, on Twitter, the DC Misfits on Twitch, and TikTok, the Pasteurized Radio. It is Martin Luther King uh, holiday weekend. Please watch a video, be inspired, do the right thing. Don't be a fucking Trump. To that, I'd like to say, Boo, we love you. We're thinking about you. Love you, Boo. Coming from the most powerful city in the world, Washington, DC. I'm Marcus Dunn, and I'm out. Greetings, this is Crushing Boo from the District of Misfits show. If you're receiving this transmission, we need your help. Time and time again, our attempts to spread our message of peace, love, and shenanigans has been hampered by equipment malfunction. Help us upgrade our gear, expand our reach, 
and save the galaxy from the forces of evil. Or at least the forces of boredom. You can help by donating to, liking, and sharing the link attached to this video. Please help us, misfits. Your only hope.